This morning, I'd like to uh, talk about freedom for a few moments with you today. And we're going to base the message on a verse that comes to us from the gospel. We're not going to be using the regular assigned scripture lessons today. So we turn to the gospel of John, the eighth chapter, verses 31 and 32, where we read these words. They are somewhat familiar. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I want to talk about freedom today, but before we do that, I want to talk about, uh, or tell you, share with you a legend, a legend about the day uh, of our nation's birth. In that little hall, in Philadelphia. We have a picture, a painting that was painted that portrays what took place in that room in Philadelphia. On that day, long ago, there was a debate that raged for hours in that room. And the men gathered there were honorable men. And even so, if they were going to do what they were going to do to sign that Declaration of Independence, It actually was a life-changing event. I think I'm going to put this up here a little bit and see if that helps a little bit. I don't know. It seems like it's not sounding just right. There. Maybe that's better. Uh, It was a life-changing event. They would sign the Declaration of Independence, and in the eyes of the King of England, it was actually treason. They would be committing treason, and if they committed treason, it meant that they could be put to death. And so the legend then says that at one point then, at this point, a man stood up and began to speak. And this man is described as not a young man, but one who had to gather all of his energy for his impassioned speech. And he began to speak about the grievances that had brought them to this particular moment in history. And finally, his voice uh, falling Um, getting a little softer, he said. They may turn every tree into a gallows, every hole into a grave, and yet the words of that parchment can never die. To the mechanic in the workshop, it will speak hope. To the slave in the mines, it will speak freedom. Sign the parchment. Sign, even if the next moment the noose is around your neck. Because that parchment will be the textbook of freedom, the Bible of the rights of man forever. And then the man fell back, totally exhausted from that speech. And then the legend says that the 56 delegates were so moved by this speech and his eloquence that they then rushed forward and they signed this document destined to be as an immortal uh, work, as a work, uh, as mortal a work immortal work as it could ever be. When they turned to thank him for this wonderful speech, the legend says he was not to be found and no one could ever speak that they had met them. No one knew that who he was. And they didn't know how he got into the room because the room was guarded and locked. That's the legend. A beautiful story. That's the legend. But the truth is that 56 men did sign the Declaration of Independence that day. And these men pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. And we know that some of them had to give their lives in the war that followed. And most gave up their fortunes. And all persevered and preserved their sacred honor. Now we might be asking today, what kind of people were they? What kind of men were they? 24 of them, we are told, were lawyers and jurists. And 11 of them were merchants and tradesmen. And 9 were farmers. And they were soft-spoken men of means and education. And they had achieved much in their life. And they were secure. But they valued freedom even more than all of the things that they had accomplished in their life. Now this, what we're talking about today, is what the 4th of July Independence Day celebration is all about. It's all about freedom and separation from tyranny, 
Freedom and separation from taxation without representation. Freedom and separation from, from government-imposed worship. It's about men who shared a common ideal, just as was expressed in the New Hampshire state motto, which goes this way, live free or die. Live free or die. Now, it may seem odd to us, but these men actually valued freedom even more than life itself. Now, we have another story today that we want to speak about, and it's a story about freedom. Freedom in the Old Testament at the time of creation. And so I'd like to have everybody read that with me, this story. For in the beginning, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Go all the way back to the book of Genesis. And I might just add that last week we were able to visit the Creation Museum in Kentucky. And in a special area of the museum, you walk into what, is, what looks like the Garden of Eden. And you see Adam and Eve. And this whole story becomes alive to you. So if you haven't ever seen the Creation Museum, I would encourage you to go and see it. But here we have this story. They could eat of every tree, but one tree in the garden. That's what God told Adam and Eve. But we're told that that first man and woman, Adam and Eve, decided that freedom to eat of every single tree in the garden, you know, that's pretty generous of God to say you could eat of every single tree in the garden, but one. And so the first man and woman decided that freedom to eat of every tree in the garden, but one, wasn't enough freedom. They wanted more. So Adam and Eve ate of that tree that they were told not to eat of. And so Adam and Eve declared their declaration of independence from God. It happened that day in the Garden of Eden, and they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And with their eating, they brought death to themselves and for all people. And this motto that we were talking about before, live free or die, doesn't fit anymore. But we say, live free and you will die. What are we talking about? What does this mean today? What are we talking about? If we as sinful human beings are free to follow our sinful human nature, we will surely die. Because from the moment of birth, from the time of the fall of Adam and Eve, we suffer with sin sickness and we from the moment of birth want to go totally in the opposite direction of where God wants us to go. So we do need help. And this appears to be the opposite of course of what took place uh, at that signing of the Declaration of Independence. But there's another story, another analogy that we can make and another lesson that we're going to be able to learn from as well. And that is that the cost of freedom is blood. Blood. Now we're talking about the Revolutionary War. And it established the freedom of the country by the shedding of blood. And whether you know the name of the war by the Civil War or by the, uh, by the war between the states, blood was shed so that people would be free. And I'm just amazed as you travel around the country how many uh, national parks and memorials are set up to remember what took place in the war between the states, the Civil War, and how many people shed blood and were killed because of that war for freedom. Two world wars later, Korea, Vietnam, and others, many others to name just a few, uh, they wit actually these wars witnessed to the value of freedom. Tens of thousands of people shed their blood for freedom for their loved ones and even for freedom for those people who they didn't even know. And we are experiencing this again in the battlefield in the Middle East, aren't we? All this for the sake of freedom. It is a solemn and a sobering reality that without the shedding of blood, we would have no freedom. We would have no country. For it seems that there is no end to those who would desire to shed their blood, to take everything that we have, this freedom, away from us. 
And yet we're also today reminded of yet another, another one. Another one who willingly shed his blood for us. This is Jesus. This is the Christ of God. This Christ tells us and his disciples, and he reminds us today why he took human flesh upon us in order to, in order to be our substitute, to be a sacrifice for our sin. And so the gospel says, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. The cost of freedom has and always will be the shedding of blood, the giving up of life. And as a result of our declaration of independence from God in the Garden of Eden, God says that we too will surely die. Sin brought death into the world. And when we are confronted with this fact, we realize that we are also guilty, miserable sinners, separated from God. And it cuts us to the quick. For unless we die to sin, we can never know the true and real life that God wants to give us. Real freedom from the law and from sin is all focused and centered in Jesus Christ because it cost Jesus his life. It cost him his blood. And we are now free to serve and free to live for him. And this is the freedom, my friends, that comes from knowing the good news of Jesus. For Jesus tells us, if we hold on to his teaching, if we hold on to his teaching, we're talking about the scripture from Genesis through Revelation, the inspired, inerrant word of God, that if we hold on to his word from beginning to end, we will be his disciples and we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. The truth of the gospel is what sets us free through what Christ did for us on the cross. And so we are free because of Jesus. We're free to follow God's commandments. We're free to serve the people around us to show mercy and, and compassion and love. We're free to share the gospel of Jesus Christ through our witness to those who don't know who Jesus is. For Jesus came for all people. He doesn't want to leave anyone behind. We are free to, to live, free to live as God's people, to live for Christ in all that we do. That's what we're free to do. Free from sin so we can be free to live for him. So I would, I would ask you to have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Celebrate. Celebrate this Wednesday our independence from those other nations and people in the world who would want to keep us captive and take away our freedom. Let us be thankful of the freedom that we have in this land because of the shedding of the blood of so many people who have sacrificed themselves for us. But at the same time, even more, May we rejoice and be glad every single day in the freedom that we have from sin, death, and the power of the devil, all won by Jesus, by the shedding of his blood for us and for the whole world. The same blood that he gives to us when we gather around this table to receive Holy Communion for the forgiveness of our sins. So today we celebrate that through the work of the Holy Spirit, you and I have been delivered back into the dependence on God. And we call this faith. And faith is a gift, a gift from the Holy Spirit. So we can trust in God and his mercy, trust in his promises, trust that our sins are forgiveness, forgiven, trust that we will be in heaven forever. We are free. We are free from sin, from Satan, and even from eternal death itself. And because of Jesus, we can say today, free at last, free at last. Thank God we are free at last. Amen.
The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.